In the previous video, we looked at plotting graphs. So we took a bunch of different values of x, we maybe a table of values, and we substituted that into a given equation, and that gave us the y value for that particular x, and then we plotted those points to get um, a particular shape of a graph. So we're not going to cover that again. We're just going to take uh, the different types of equation that we have and what the graph looks like for each. So it's kind of a summary video. Now let's look at linear equations first. I'll explore this in a separate video. But the equation is, which you may have seen before, y equals mx plus c. And in this equation, m represents the gradient, i.e. how steep the line is. So just some examples. If I had, say, y equals 2x plus 1. Now it has a positive gradient. The number in front of the x, the m, is positive, and therefore the line is going uphill. So it would look something like this, an uphill equation, an uphill graph. Let's put the x and the y on there. And similarly, if we had, say, y equals minus 3x plus 4, so this time we've got a negative number from the x, a negative gradient, it's going to be going downhill like that. Now, quadratic graphs, um, I explore those in a separate video as well, sketching quadratics in more detail. But the general equation is y equals something x squared plus something x plus something. And let's just go for a, a few different cases. One that's worth recognising is the kind of simplest quadratic you can have, which is y equals x squared. Now don't be upset we've got missing terms here. Um, the number in front of the x squared, the coefficient of x squared, that is 1, so we've got 1x squared, 1x squared, and b is 0, and that means if we have 0x, we don't even have that term, so we don't have the x term, and c is 0 as well. That's okay, a is 1, b is 0, c is 0. This is still an example of quadratic graph because the highest power is still 2, it's, we still have an x squared term, and that just looks like this. Yep, so it goes through the origin and it's a smiley face shape. And whenever A is positive, whenever the number in front of the x squared is positive, it is going to have a smiley face shape. So if we give another example, y equals, say, x squared, let's go for 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. It's a positive number in front of the x squared and therefore it's still going to have a smiley face shape. Finally, if we had an example or where the number in front of the x squared is negative, so y equals minus 3x squared minus 4x, for example, or let's say plus 4x, the number in front of the x squared is negative this time, and therefore it's going to have a sad face shape. So it's going to be upside down. It might not look exactly like this, but because it's a negative number from the x squared, it's going to have an upside down sort of smiley face shape. So a frowny face shape, if you like. Now, cubic graphs, the general form of a cubic equation is y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Now, just like with a quadratic, so it's a sort of most basic example, and it's worth knowing what this looks like, is when you have just y equals x cubed. So that's the simplest cubic you could have. We've still got an x cubed term, but there's no x squared term because b is 0. There's no x term because c is 0 and d is 0 as well. And that just looks like this. So in the middle, it kind of levels out. It kind of plateaus. It levels out in the middle, and then it goes back up. We actually call that a point of inflection, but you don't need to know that. Now let's go through a few other examples. If we had, say, y equals 2x cubed plus 3x. Now, I call this a positive cubic because there's a positive number on front of the x cubed, just like I would call this a positive quadratic because there's a positive number from the x squared, and I call that a negative quadratic. So this is a positive cubic, and basically, in general, you get this, what I call an uphill roller coaster shape. So it's uphill roller coaster shape. And as you can see, it's still the same shape as this. It basically has two swerves. So imagine you're in a car and you swerve to the right and you swerve to the left. That's what shape you get. So it swerves, swerves again. Here, it swerves and it swerves again. And finally, let's do a negative cubic. So we had, say, y equals minus x cubed minus 2. 
Now there's a negative number in front of the x cubed there, it's minus 1 x cubed, and therefore it has a downhill roller coaster shape, so it's going to go like this. Like that. Right, let's move on to the last two types of graph. We have reciprocal graphs, and in general they have the equation y equals some number, some constant we call it, over x. So a here is a constant, that's a, a value that doesn't change, so it could be a number, for example, it could be pi, it could be 3, etc. And x here is the variable, that's the thing that can change. As we go across the graph, x changes, but that value doesn't change. So let's draw some examples. Let's do what I call a positive reciprocal graph first. So let's say y equals 3 over x. Now, it's, I call it a positive reciprocal because there's a positive number here. A is a positive value. And when that happens, you get this particular shape. So you get this curve in this quadrant here, and you get a curve in the bottom left quadrant, and you get that kind of shape. And then we have an example of a negative reciprocal graph. So y is equal to minus 2 over x. I should really put the axes, the x and the y in. And you basically get the opposite. You are in this quadrant here, and this quadrant here, you get that particular shape. Now finally, and again I've got a separate video on this and kind of problems to do with exponential equations, we have y equals a times b to the power of x. And a and b are both constants, and x is the variable. So let's look at some examples. If we had, say, y is equal to 2 to the x. Now, in this particular case, it's effectively 1 times 2 to the x. So the a is 1, and the b is 2. So we've got 1 times 2 to the x. That's just the same as saying y equals 2 to the x. And you get this shape here. Now, what features do we have here? Well, the first thing to note is that the graph is the y value is always positive, so it's always above the x-axis. That's one thing to note. Another thing to note is, if um, let's look at the y-intercept. If x was 0, because at this point here, x is 0, isn't it? What would y be? Well, 2 to the power of 0 is 1, isn't it? So in this case, y is going to be 1. So let's put the 1 on there. Yep. Let's do another example. I'm going to do another graph like this. So y equals, say, 3 times 4 to the x. It's going to have exactly the same shape as before. So it's always above the x-axis, this kind of shape here. It's probably going to be much steeper than this graph because this number is bigger than this. If the 4 is bigger than the 2, the number, this b here, is bigger. So it's going to go up steeper. But the thing is, when you're actually sketching this, because we don't know the scale of these axes, Unless we draw these on the same set of axes, if we drew this on here, we can see it's steeper. But if it's drawn a separate graph, we, we can't actually tell how steep it's going to be, so it doesn't actually matter. But what we can tell is what this y-intercept is. So if we again, here x is 0, we do y is equal to 3 times 4 to the 0. 4 to the power of 0 is 1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. And 3 times 1 is 3. So this y-intercept would be 3. Now we're going to explore this in a later video, but I might as well finish off with the trig graphs. And we'll look in much more detail on these uh, in this other video. But we've got y equals sine of x. And a general shape, it looks like this. So it starts at the origin, goes up, it goes up to 1, and it goes down to minus 1. And it actually goes on forever, so it's just kind of an infinite wave. So it's going to do like that on forever. But we'll look at uh, these, uh, what these exact coordinates are. For example, what's the coordinate of that point? What's the coordinate of that point? What's the coordinate of that point? In another video. And then finally, we've got y equals cos of x. And it has this shape here. So this one's a bit different. It starts off at 1 this time, rather than at the origin. And it goes down and then back up again. So we can see the sine graph starts the origin and starts going up and sort of waves, whereas the cos graph starts at 1 and then goes down and again waves. And if you want to extend it into the negative region, the negative x region, you can continue it like that.